My name is Nate Helgeson, and I'm a bassoonist with Early Music Vancouver, and I play this lovely instrument, the Baroque bassoon. This is an instrument made by a maker called Guntram Wolf in Germany, and it's a copy of an instrument from about 1700. So quite an old style of bassoon, although it's a new instrument. It's a particularly interesting instrument to me. The original is an anonymous instrument. It's stamped this kind of mysterious HKICW, and nobody knows what that stands for. But it's a great instrument because it kind of covers all the bases. It can play the bass register really well. It plays easily in the high register. It's agile and stable. So while there may be other instruments that have strengths in other areas, this is a kind of all-rounder. <laughs> The obvious difference from a modern bassoon is that it doesn't have all of the silver key work totally covering the wood. It has just five brass keys that operate tone holes that are further away than my hands could reach, so I have to have the little keys. This is actually an instrument that is about nine feet long. It doesn't look nine feet long, um, but it turns around at the bottom. There's a hole down here that connects to another hole that goes all the way back up, and so you can get a really low bass instrument that way in a sort of compact package, a user-friendly instrument. The not-so-obvious difference, at least to the eye, is that it has a very different kind of sound from the modern bassoon. It's more tender, more flexible, maybe a little grainier, earthier, um, and it has a very flexible palette of tone colors um, to be able to play lots of different kinds of music, beautiful singing tenor lines and kind of rich, earthy bass lines. The instrument's made of mountain maple. It has this beautiful curly figure that you see everywhere. And actually, I understand that in the 18th century, when they were making bassoons like this, North American maple was very popular. So there's a connection to, to our continent here. The Baroque bassoon was especially prized in the 18th century for being an instrument that could fill a lot of different roles. It could blend in with many different instruments and could accompany the voice really well was known as kind of a musical chameleon. It could play all these different roles, blend in in different colors, um, and that made it a particularly valuable instrument. And the Baroque bassoon in particular, as opposed to the modern instrument, is particularly good at this because of that flexible sound that it has. The instrument um, has a huge palette of colors and can blend in many different contexts. We can play a sort of tender sound um, to accompany a slow aria. you can hear kind of a really fiery, passionate sound for something more active. It has all that kind of snappiness in the sound. And then it also can play very fast. It's actually quite an agile instrument, which you would not necessarily expect thinking of a low instrument. The really key thing about bassoons, that what makes a bassoon sound like a bassoon, is actually not something you would expect or something that you can really even see from the outside. Our hands only can spread so far. So if you want to make an instrument that can play very low, it has to be very long. But that means that the fingers couldn't reach the holes, so the holes are actually drilled at a sharp angle into the wood. And that long, sharp um, angled tone hole gives it a different kind of sound. It gives it that mellow sound um, that audiences describe sometimes. Whereas if it had a straight tone hole like an oboe or a flute, it would have a brighter, more brash sound. 
I make my own reads um, for this instrument. I play many different historical bassoons and they all take a little bit of a different read. So there's sort of different flavors of historical bassoon read. One read is probably two hours of labor all told, although I spread it out over a couple of weeks. It's a huge labor of um, both love and frustration, something that we have to do as double reed players, but it gives us a great deal of control over the sound and response of our instrument. I love about the Berg bassoon um, getting to play all of those different roles, getting to be a vocal accompanist, getting to play bass lines in the big orchestra, getting to play solos. There's a very large solo repertoire for this instrument. So getting to do all those different things means it's never boring. <laughs> I always get comments about how the bell of the bass this bassoon looks like a pepper grinder, um, which I think actually it spectacularly does. Um, I guess the people who make pepper grinders must have also made bassoons.